Amen. Praise God. So we, uh, we're just going to move straight into the words for this uh, hour. Praise the name of the Lord. As I say, when God has, when someone, a, a, a minister is coming up here to speak, he's speaking as an oracle of God. It's not him that speaks, but it is God that is using him to bless. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And it is my with great joy today that I want to invite our dear lovely pastor, Pastor uh, Oli, praise the name of the Lord, Pastor Oli Kaufman, to bless us this morning with the word. God bless you. Can we put our hands together Amen. to the Lord? Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just have to worship you real quick. Amen. Just to sing uh, how great they are. Amen. Opportunity of oh, blessing. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, mommy. Amen. And thank you, everybody. Amen. Amen. Welcome, everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. All the pastors, all the ministers. Amen. All the helpers, the technical team. 
Amen. Everybody is welcome tonight. And thank you. Amen. Amen. Every time I hear that song, though, it always reminds me of home. Because it's one of our favorite songs that you used to always sing. Amen. So I say, uh, I do that in honor of mommy. Amen. 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 I was thinking last night, one of, mommy, what's one of mommy's favorite songs. No, that's, that's one of her favorite songs, you know, because she knew how great God was through everything. God is great. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Father God, we hand, Lord God, this service over to you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for this wonderful, Lord God, opportunity, Lord God, to share, Lord God, your word, Lord God. Father, I pray that you would take control, Lord God. Move, Lord God, any nervousness, Lord God. Oh God, anything that rise up the flesh, Lord God, I pray, my God, you will remove from me, Lord God. I pray, my God, use me as an oracle, Lord God, for you to speak through me, Lord God. I give you my mouth, Lord God. I give you my tongue, Lord God. You speak through me, Lord God. I pray, my God, that any word of God is not from you, Lord God, that I will not speak, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God, in this service, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, I was wondering, like last Sunday, Daddy told me to share, he asked me to share this Sunday. You know, so I was like praying and wondering what to share on. And God gave me a word to share on. And like, I, like for me, I always look for confirmation. And all this week, everything like stuff that I was watching online, I was just picking random stuff, like to listen to online with like preaching and all that. And it was in line with what God was telling me to share on. And even Reverend Victor, when I came in last yesterday, while Reverend Victor was sharing now, when he went to the prodigal son, you know, that was was a seal, you know, was a seal that to to share on this one. Like so. What I'm going to share on is um, don't quit. Amen. Don't quit. Amen. That God said, God sent us not to quit, not to give up. You know, and anything that we go through and everything that we go through, like in life, don't quit. You know, don't quit. So in, it's very easy to, to stay strong when everything is going okay, when everything is going well, when we're, it's like when we're, like we're flying on the motorway. You know, it's easy to go past when we're flying on the motorway. But then when the traffic jam comes, we start slowing down, you know, and then all of a sudden we start moving and complaining. Like, move, like, why are you going so, why are you going so slow? Like that, that one driver you have in front of you, we call, like, it's called the son, the driver. You know, going so slow, I mean, you know, but God says, when in the hard times, do not quit. Amen. And the first one I'm going to take from, like, um, uh, uh, a verse that we all know is Jeremiah 29 11. Amen. We all know this. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Amen. Amen. Like God has, you know, God has thoughts towards you. Like towards each of us, He says, he, like, he has thoughts that I think towards you. Says so you know, thoughts of peace. So God wants to give us peace. You know, in everything, even when we're going to go through hard times, God wants to give us peace. You know, because we are going to go through hard times in this walk. You know, the lie, the lie is that oh, we will never go through hard times. Yes, we will. You know, because we're living here on this earth. You know, we're living here on this earth. So we're going to go through hard times. But He wants to through those hard times. He, he like He says that He. He, a thoughts of peace. He wants to give us peace. You know, when his thoughts towards us are not of evil, okay? But I'm not, and then he says, to give you a future and a hope. You know, God has a plan for our future, you know? And all we have to do is just ask him, call upon him, spend time in prayer with him, and he will reveal those plans that he has for us. You know, that's, cause that's the trouble sometimes is that we don't spend too much time with God, you know? When we're going through hard times, our, our head seems to be like, oh, scattered, you know, like this word that the Irish had, and scattered brain, you know, where you're like, ah, you want to scream, you know, but like instead of screaming, instead of like uh, trying to figure out, we, that's the time we, we hit our knees and we pray, you know, it's the time we hit our knees and pray, 
you know, because God is always there. You know, God is always there. I've written down here, don't quit. God has a plan for each and every one of us as we walk with him. Like he has a plan for each and every one of us, you know. All we have to do is ask him, you know. All we have to do is ask, like, it's like our parents to have a plan for our future. You know, when we're growing up as children, our parents has a plan. You know, they want to see us going to college. They want to see us like and getting getting passing our grades. You know, they want to see us working. They want to see us married. They want to see us have our own our own houses, our own cars. That's the, the parents, the plan our parents has for us. Uh, and and how much more does God have? You know, He's our dad. You know, He has a plan for us. He wants to see us do well. You know, He wants to see us do well. So like. Do, do not quit on God. In hard times, do not quit on God. Not only do we not quit on ourselves, but don't quit on God either. You know, because like when we're going through like hard times, we just feel like quitting on God, like uh, God's not real, you know? But no, God is real. You know, he is real and he will help us through everything. Psalms 40 verse 5. Amen. Psalms chapter 40 and verse 5. It says, Many, O Lord my God, are your wonderful works which you have done, and your thoughts towards us cannot be um, recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. You know, God's plans for us is more than can be numbered. You know, everything. Like, we, if we just sit down and think about, even think about, like, to the age that we are now, what God has done in our lives. You know, even when we messed up, even when we failed, even when we went through our own thing, it's God that held us. No, He was still with us. When we're out there doing our own thing, disobedient, He said, He was with us. You know, He was with us. You know, He has done so many things for us. Like I remember once when I was a child and um, I was only about, I think it was about like kind of five, six and then um, like I'm um, living in a style and there were flakes corner. I was, um, I stopped, looked, looked like in my own brain because I was walking home in my own brain. I looked and I seen no car coming. So I ran and all of a sudden the car comes out of nowhere, hits me. The car just comes around the corner and hits me. And puts me flying onto the footpatch. No, it puts me flying onto the footpatch. And I hit God. Now the person stopped, looked, and then went. You know, didn't even stop to see was I okay or are you okay? He stopped, looked, and when I got up, the person just drove off and up to the and said, Ah, he's okay. You know, but like even then, when I was like, like when I was very young, you know, and I got hit by that car and was fl put flying onto the footpath, you know. Looking back now, I can see God was with me. You know, He protected me because worse could have happened. So I could have ended up maybe with a broken bone or, you know, worse could have happened, but God was with me. Why? Because God had, had a plan for my life. You know, and that's what it is with God. He's with us, He has a plan. All we have to do is surrender, surrender to Him, surrender to Him, you know, because. What we can do with our life without him, he can actually even do better if we're with him. He can do better. You know, so if we have to hand our life over to him, I've written, if we think about all the things God has done in our life, we would we we'd be here all day, we'd be here all night, we'd be here for months, you know. For even for even in the for even the plans he has for our for our life are great, are great. All we have to do is trust in him. You know, the plans he has for our life are great. He's got great plans. All we have to do is trust him. Trust him. You know, and when like when you think about trust, you know, you're giving your whole life to that person. You know, you trust that person with everything. You know, you have that one guy where you can trust this man or this this woman that you know with anything, or you can go and you tell them anything and they won't tell anybody. You know, that's the same way with God. You can trust him 
where you can rely on the human being, you can even rely on God even more. Because where that human being would fail, God won't fail. You know, God won't fail. God is on the 24 hour, 24 hour phone line. You know, he never hangs up. Even when we complain, he still listens. He never hangs up. You know, he never hangs up. Amen. Amen. And it says his thoughts also towards us cannot be recounted because there are more than can be numbered. Like that says, his thoughts towards us, we can't count the thoughts he has because they can be more, more than numbered. You know, the thoughts that he has towards us, the plans that he has for our life, you know, is unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know, and like sometimes we think that, um, well, if I hand my life over to God now, I can't, you know, do the things I would like to do, or, you know, I can't do this, I can't do it. No, 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 no. You can actually even do better. You know, the things that you think you can do, when we hand our life over to God, He will make us even better. No, He will make us even better than, than what we, we can think. Like when you look at some um, footballers, you know, that are, that are born again Christians, so some footballers that are born again Christians, you know, they're there playing football. Like look at the manager of um, Liverpool, you know, he's a born again Christian. The goal, goalkeeper of Liverpool, a born again Christian. You know, and look at where what God has done in their lives. You know, look at you can be still God can still give you the desires of your heart. You know, He says He will give us the desires of our hearts. No, so it doesn't mean that oh, if I give my life over to God now, I can't do what I would like to. No, no, no. God says He will give us the desires of our hearts. All we have to do is just rely on Him. Because so, the lie, the lie of the enemy. Which is a lot what like um, some Christians will use that uh, oh if I become a Christian now I we'll have to live the life of a poverty life. No, no, no. God says he stands for us as uh, good, you know, and he wants to prosper us. He wants to prosper us. You no, know, he wants us like if you look at all the men of God in the Bible, like I do look at the old testament, see all the men of God, they were rich, you know, they had nice things, God gave them the best, you know. Because the lie in me is, oh, I'm going to have to live a poor life, you know. It's the wrong interpretation of scripture, you know. So God will give us the great things. All we have to do is just rely on him. Amen. Psalms 37 and verse um, 3 and 5. Verse 3 and 5. I'm going to read verse 3 and then jump to verse 5. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell, dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Amen. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Amen. Commit all your ways to the Lord. Trust him and he will bring everything to pass. No, trust him. No, don't give up. Like we see like in Foundation Ministries, we went through one of the most biggest trials and biggest tests in the history of Foundation Ministries, when God took mommy home, you know, it was hard. It was like, we were asking, why God, why God? Why would a loving God do this? Why would, you know, just trust him, trust him, you know, trust him, rely on him. You know, God is in all things. He's in all things, you know, and like he, he says, and he says, and he shall bring it to pass. You know, that thing that you would like to do, if you just trust God, he will bring it to pass. You know, don't quit. Amen. Proverbs 3, 5. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Amen. Lean not on your own understanding. Don't try and understand things, you know, because our own understanding can mess everything up of things. You know, sometimes we bring in our own understanding into the things of God. You, we can't bring our own understanding into the things of God. You know, we just trust God, you know, because sometimes God would do things that would cause us to be stretched. You know, it's like a child. When he enters, um, he's a child and he starts growing and he, he enters teenagehood. If he needs to get taller, what happens? He has to be stretched. 
Like I remember as a teenager going through groan pains in bed, back back of my leg in pain because of groaning. No, and I wake sometimes I'd be like crying, you know, because it was hurting. But that's what happens when God wants to grow us, He stretches us. And sometimes it hurts. You know, because sometimes he wants to remove things from our life that we think is okay, but God says, No, it's not okay. I need that thing, I need that to go. You know, I need pride, I need like whatever it is, you no, know, it will cause pain sometimes in our life to let it go. You no, know, especially forgiveness. And God tells us to forgive somebody, and we just don't want to forgive that person. God says, No, you have to forgive. You have to. It's not about feelings, it's about what God says. No, because sometimes we don't feel like forgiving somebody, but we have to forgive, you know, and it's the power. And yes, it hurts. Of course it hurts, but it, it causes growth. Because out of that forgiveness, you will see that you're free. No, even though it's hard for you to do it, you go and do it and you are, ah, I'm free now. Amen. You know, don't quit. Amen. I would now here is trust God with your life. We need to trust God, like we need to trust God with our life. Delight in God, um, sorry, delighting in God would cause God to give us the desires of our heart. No, when we delight in God, we will get the desires of our heart. You know, and then with the, you see, the lie of the devil is that if we trust in God, if we trust in God, um, you know, like I've written, uh, it did, like, it's like why it says, if we trust in God, you know, we will lose out in a few things, you know what I mean? But that's the lie. You no, know, that's the lie, the enemy. You know, like we look at our, our, our other friends that are not serving God. You know, we say, oh, if I trust in God now, I'm going to lose all these friends. You know, because I'm talking about God now, I'm preaching the gospel now. And you know, look, you, don't worry about that. The liar friends will stay your friends. No, those friends that will leave you because you're sharing the gospel, they're not your friends. No, they're not your friends. Because a liar friend will stay with you um, 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 even when you're preaching the gospel. No, that's a friend that loves you. No, that's a friend that loves you. No, especially as young people, never ever, like I, like me growing up as a, 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 as a youth and everything, I, I'm, I was shy. I, I found it hard to share the gospel because of, you know, because I was afraid of what my friends would think, you know, which this generation, don't be, don't be sure because, because you see a lot of things that's happening in young people's lives now. You know, you're the answer to that problem. You know, that friend at school, that friend in college is going through things. You know, you're the answer to that problem. You've, get, you've got the answer to that problem. You know, you got the answer to, to make them not commit suicide, you know, with stress of college and everything. No, you got the answer. No, don't hide the truth. No, it's like what I said in life. When you have the answer, if you have the cure for cancer, you're not going to hide it. You've got the cure. You've got the cure for that person's depression. When you see somebody in college or somebody in school that's depressed and you don't come and share with them the gospel, you know, and then you find out that they've committed suicide. Now, how would you feel? No, you're the answer. This generation, they're going through a lot of issues. You know, like when you there last week, a person came out, I think was from Sligo, came out with the fence of motor and jumped off the cliffs. You know, they pulled a, bo a, a body out there last weekend. I would guess, I think it was Sligo the person came from. So I traveled all the way from Sligo to the cliffs of motor and she committed suicide. You know, when we're like when when we have the answer to the, those problems, you no, know, never be never be ashamed, you know, because you're you as as a young person in school and college, you're the hope for that person. You no, know, never be ashamed. You know, never be ashamed of God. Amen. Amen. As I said, um, trust trust God. We will not be able to get the things. We desire, but the truth is, God would God would actually do it better than we can do it if we trust Him. Amen. There's some things that we might not get that we desire, but like what I says, God can do it better. Just trust Him. Rely on Him. Rely on Him. 
Because some of that things that we might desire, if we go and get it, might end up bringing harm, bringing harm to us. You know, it might end up bringing harm to us. So, and God is actually protecting, you know, protecting us from, from that thing. You know, he's actually protecting us. Psalms 32, verse 10. And written is, why, why we should trust God. Amen. Psalms 32, 10. It reads, Many sorrows um, shall be to the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, mercy shall surround him. Amen. No, when we trust God, God will show mercy. He will show mercy. Though so it says there are many sorrows shall be to the wicked. So if the wicked will sorrow, sorrow, sorrow. They will always be in pain. But when you trust God, God will show mercy. Mercy will always surround us. Amen. And I've written out one of the things is trusting God with our life will bring about mercy. No, that's number one reason why we should trust God, because we'll bring about mercy in our life. When we're going through issues, God will just show favor. No, when we cry out, you know, it's like a father when he, when with his children, you know, then I he could hear any other child shouting and not be bothered. But the minute he, he hears his own child, even the mother, the minute she hears her own child, uh, she's off that seat straight away. What happened? What happened? What happened? You know, and that's where it is with God. The minute he hears you crying out, he's like, what happened? And then he just, he, he's that God that wants to sit down and talk to us and help us. You no, know, all, all we have to do is trust him, you know, trust him and rely on him. Amen. Amen. Genesis 30, 39, verse 1 to 4. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. And Potiphar, Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, a captain of the guard in Egypt, brought, brought him from the Ishmaelites, as bought him from the Ishmaelites, who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he, and he was a successful man, and he was in the house of, of his master, the, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house, and all that had and all and all that he had he put under his authority. Amen. 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 We just read this this week when we were doing our Bible study, you know, and it, it came to mind when I was putting this together. You know, like when we trust God, people will see God is with us. You know, and you see what happened to Joseph there. You know, he was like he was bought as a slave. You know, but Joseph still trusted God, and what even what he was going through, even what he was going through wasn't right. You know, it wasn't right what he was going through, but he still trusts God. And look, like, like we see what happened. You know, everything was put in because, because he was seen, because God, he was seen, he was noticed. Everything was put into his hands. You know, everything, and that's what God would do when we trust him. You know, he, he will bring favor upon us. You know, favor. You, know, you just heard the testimony today, you know, where God brought favor. The testimony, three testimonies, the favor of God. So God showed favor. And that's what God does for his children. He shows favor when we trust him. You know, when we trust him. Amen. Number two is when we trust God. That's number two, yeah. When we trust God and um, people will see God in us. We see, we see here Joseph trusted God even in hard times. And even in the hard time of his life. You know, when we go through hard times, just trust God. You know, trust God. The way we trust God in the good times, do the same thing in the hard times. You know, like, like never ever quit. Amen. Also, and then number three is, also we see when, when we trust God, everything is put, er, 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 and everything we put our hands to will prosper. We see that there with Joseph, everything we put his hands to will prosper. 
and people were seeing it. We're seeing there where his masks have seen it. You know, that, that's why everything was put into his hands, because it's seen that everything he puts on. And it's the same way in college, in our workplace, everything we put our hands to will prosper, and people will see it. You know, and we get promoted because of that. We're seeing where he got promoted. You know, and that's what God would do. When we put our trust in God, you know, promotion comes with it. Promotion comes with it in our workplace, in college, in school. When we do well in, like we do well in school, you know, and we're trusting God with our exams, everything, like, you know, we'll do well, you know, even in college, you do well in college because of the trust in God. Amen. Number four is trust in God also brings about promotion in our workplace, like what I just said. Amen. Don't quit in our walk with God. You know, sorry, don't quit in our walk with God. Amen. Don't quit in our walk with God. Never ever quit. You know, never say, uh, forget this. I'm going to go back out into the world. No, never do it. Don't do it. No, yes, there are times. Yes, we, uh, the, there's times in life where we get rebuked. You know, when I came to Foundation Ministries, you know, there was many times I got taken, well, my mommy, you know, she taught me off, daddy taught me off, you know, but it doesn't mean we, like, act like a child and go running out the door, you know, I'm done with this, I'm done with this, you know, no, 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 we don't do that, don't quit, you know, when we get reviewed, when we get taught off, when we get corrected, it, it's, it's because of growth. You know, you no, know, it brings about maturity. You know, when you're able to take correction, you're mature. If we're not able to take correction, we're not mature. You know, we have to take correction. You know, we have to say, okay, I'm wrong. Uh, even even sometimes, even when we're right, you just say, okay, you know, I'm okay. Why? Because we're under authority. You know, we're under authority. You know, we're all under authority. You know, everywhere, like every, you know, there's leadership. Amen. There's leadership around our heart, and we're going to be corrected. That's a part of life. Amen. It's a part of life. In your workplace, you get corrected. In school, you like you're taught that even from a young age, when you go when you go when you're born and you're, you're growing, you see your parents are correcting you. You see when you go to school, you're corrected. When you go to college, you're corrected. You know, it's a part of life. You know, it's a part of life. Well, we could, it's kind of like um, like you grin and bear it. You grin and bear it. Amen. You know, because it brings about a blessing. Amen. It brings about a blessing. John 21, verse 15 to 19. So when they when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love do, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, we have. Yes, Lord, you know I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. Amen. Amen. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. And he said to him, the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him, the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Most surely I say to you, when, when you are younger, you, you, grind, you grinded yourself with, um, grinded yourself and walked where you wish, but when you are old, you are stretched out. You, you can, sorry, you will stretch out your hands, and another will guard you and carry you where where you do not wish. This he spoke and signified by what by what that what that he would glory God. Sorry, glorify God. And when, when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. Amen. Amen. We know this story about Peter. You know, when he was brought, when Jesus was taken and crucified, he denied Jesus three times. 
you know, and then he went to work crying and he like he repented and he was crying, you know. And Peter could have been like um Judas. He could have quit it. Like Judas quit it. You no, know, he gave up everything, he went throwing the money back. He felt bad after he realized what he'd done, he felt bad, he threw the money back. And then he went and killed himself. So Peter goes, denies Jesus three times. He goes, he feels bad, but he repents. You know, he repents. So he could have been like Judas and quit and gave up and said, I will take my life. No, he didn't. He repented. And we see what happened. So when we look at the life, look at his life, we can see here that Jesus, there was forgiveness. Jesus restored him. Jesus restored him. And that's what Jesus do. Like the times when we might get angry at God and we, want, we might want to quit, you know, and sometimes we do, like we do. Sometimes we do. But the thing is, is to repent, come back, and there's restoration. You know, like what um, um, Reverend Victor was talking about yesterday, you know, with the prodigal son. You no, know, he was restored. No, that's what God wants. He wants to restore us. No, if we felt like if we quit it in any way, is that we just get we repent and then pick ourselves back up and continue. Because we see that we see that in the life of people. You know, and then we see if we go to Acts chapter two, verse four. Sorry, Acts chapter two, verse fourteen, sorry. Verse fourteen, two fourteen. But Peter standing up with the eleven raised his voice and said to them men of judah and all who dwell in jerusalem let this be known to you and heed my words like we continue reading we see that this is the first message he preached after he got full of the holy spirit you know it takes the whole, it takes us to be full of the holy spirit how we don't give up is when we put hope the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit will give us the boldness, you no, know, and the strength to keep on going. You no, know, He's the one that gives us the strength. You now Jesus said, "I will send you a Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit." He says, "I won't leave you alone. I will send you a Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit." The Holy Spirit is with us. You now Peter, the reason why he denied Jesus is because he was scared. You know that's the reason why he denied Jesus because of fear. You no know, fear can lock us. You know, fear can lock us. Never ever be afraid. When somebody when somebody asks you, are you a Christian? Are you a child? But never be afraid to say yes. Never be afraid to say yes. Like be bold. You no, know, be bold. You no, know, be bold to talk about God. You no, know, because this world needs God. Be bold. Never be scared. Never be scared to talk about him. You know, and how you how all fear goes. Is like what this was after the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came upon them. You need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will give you that boldness to talk about to talk about Jesus. He will give you that boldness. You know, ask God for boldness. You know, pray. Ask God if you're a shy person. You know, ask God for boldness. You know, is that the, that makes me come up here and do this? You know, I'm like you see, you see, my reading, my English is. Like it's one of the things in the, the course I did. It's one of the things I failed. No, I got uh, what's got. I, I was lucky to get a pass. I think she just gave me a pass just to instead of saying failed, she just gave me a pass. You know, my English was terrible. She called me into the office. She called me. Uh, she called me into the into the room after I did my paper. And she and the other way in the car was going to talk to you. It's like my English was terrible. Like my English is terrible. Look, I'm not afraid to admit it. I don't know how to spell. I like some things I find hard to spell. There's some things I ask the kids even to help me spell. You know what I mean? But it still like it still doesn't stop me from doing what God has called me to do. No, it doesn't stop me. You know, I have every excuse not to come up here and do this. I have my past, you know, where the enemy tries to use sometimes. But it's boldness. It's the Holy Spirit living within me that makes me do this. No, it's the boldness. The Holy Spirit gives me boldness. So you that speak perfect English, children, you, you speak perfect English, you write perfect. Never be ashamed. Never be ashamed of God. Never, ever. 
She says, and he says that if you deny me, I will deny you. Never deny God. No, never be ashamed. It's like I said, you're the answer. For the young people, you're the answer to all the young people that are searching. So you're the hope. You know, they might be searching. You know, that young person in school, the young person in college, like that's shy, that's quiet, that might be getting bullied. Don't follow the bullies after them and bully them. No, you be the one to go. So I got bullied in, in school. You know, I got bullied I, actually outside of school. I got bullied more outside of school than I did inside of school. You know, but the thing is, the thing is, back then there was nobody there that I could, you know, there was nobody. You know, and that's where some children that are bullied, they have nobody. No, when everybody attacked them, they have nobody. So be that one that you're there for that person. Be that one. If you see somebody get bullied, go over and be their friends. Don't care about what the rest of the people think. Oh, you're that friend now. Yes, yeah, I'm the friend. So bring them amongst your friends. Bring them amongst your friends. So that because that's what a child of God has to do. If you call yourself a child of God and you're following the bullies to bully somebody, you're not a child of God. You know, you're not a child, because that's not what a child of God would do. You know, because a child of God would bring hope. You know, would bring love. You know, compassion. You know, amen. 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 Oh, sorry, welcome, Pastor Rachel. Amen. Good to see you. Amen. Acts chapter 2 and verse 14. Did I read that, did I? Yeah. I did, didn't yes. I? Amen, amen. Psalms 138, verse 1 to 3. Amen. One, three. I will praise you with my whole heart before the gods. I will sing praises to you. I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word, your word above all your name. Verse three says, in the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. Amen. Amen. Cry out to God. Amen. Cry, we are going through hard times when you feel like cry out to God and says, he says he will give you the strength. He will give you boldness. He will give you boldness and strength. Cry out to him. You feel like giving up. You feel like quitting. Cry out to him. You know, don't ever, ever, ever quit. Don't quit in yourself. Don't quit in God. You know, don't quit. Amen. Cry, cry out to God and he will answer. God will give us the strength to keep on going. Okay? All we have to do is keep on praising him with our whole heart. Amen. We see with David, with the life of David, he had every reason to quit. Like, look what he did. You know, with Bathsheba, with killing, killing Bathsheba, like laying with a woman, making her pregnant, killing the husband of the woman. You know, everything. He had every reason to quit. But he didn't. What did he do? He prostrate when the prophet came, told him what he told him what he did, when his eyes were open, he fell on his face, he repented, he got back up and he was restored. Amen. Amen. He was restored. Amen. So what did God say? He's a man after my own heart. Even through all that, God says, he's a man after my own heart. No, that's the grace of God. No, God doesn't remember our sin. He forgets it. He doesn't choose to forget. He, um, he doesn't forget because he has Alzheimer's. You know, you know he doesn't have Alzheimer's. Not that God has Alzheimer's. He can remember, but it's a choice that he has made. It's a choice that he has made. So to, to forget our sins is a wedding choice. He says, no, I hold nothing against Ali. I hold nothing against anybody. No, that when they come before me and they repent of their sins, we're all forgiven. No, no, that's why we should never quit. Never quit. You know, um, my dad used to say, get back up on the horse. No, get back up on the horse. If you fall off the horse, get back up on it and keep on going. Don't quit. Amen. Romans chapter 4, verse 1 to 8. What then shall we say 
that Abraham our father was found according to the flesh. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast, boast about, but not before God. For what, for what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was according to him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the, the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Just as David was described, also described the, bless, the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those who lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are recovered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Amen. Amen. Our sin is forgiven. And then God doesn't impute sin. No. He doesn't impute sin. Our sin is good, and we are blessed because of that. You know, we're blessed. You know, because of what God has done, what Jesus did on the cross, we are forgiven. We are forgiven. You know, if we felt like quitting, if we messed up, we felt like quitting, we got angry at God, everything like that, look, we're forgiven. You know, we're forgiven. You know, in hard times, we, feel, we do feel like quitting. When, when tough times come, you feel like, ah, you know, but we're forgiven. We're forgiven. Everything is gone. You know, it's gone. You know, amen. amen. Welcome, Reverend Victor. Amen. amen. <laughs> amen. And so, um, it takes faith in hard times. Don't switch. When we feel like God has left us, don't quit because he has not. In, and we can see that in Deuteronomy chapter 31, the verse 8. He says, I will never leave you. Then God will, God never leaves us. He's always with us. You know, he's not, even true when we're going through the like the valley, when we're in the dark part of life, God is still with us. Like I always think of the footprints prayer. No, when we're going through hard times, there's nothing like that one footprint that's in the sand. No, it's because God is carrying, carrying you. No, God is carrying you through it. Amen. God is taking us through it. In hard times, he's taking us through it. He hasn't left. He's still with us. Amen. That's why we don't quit. Amen. Amen. Don't worry. I'm coming into landing now. Amen. <laughs> Romans chapter 8. This is the last one. Romans chapter 8, verse 18 to 26. Amen. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the, for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the Son of God, of the sons of God. For the, cre for the creation was subject to and futile, futility, not willingly, but because of him who subject it in him, in hope. Amen. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Amen. Amen. In our times, we feel like quitting. Call upon the Holy Spirit to help you, because sometimes in hard times we we find it hard to pray. Amen. Amen. No, that's why we need the Holy Spirit. You know, because like when when it's hard to pray, we pray in heaven in the heavenly language. You know, and the Holy Spirit does the rest for us. The Holy Spirit will intercede for us. No, He will do the intercession for us. He will go to God on our behalf. No, just go before, come in and pray in the Holy Spirit, pray in tongues. Now that line, that heavenly language that God, God has given you, use it. We don't know what words to say, use those words. 
you know, even if, if you can't talk, come in, stick worship music on. If you're in your house or wherever, put worship music on and just soak in the presence of God. Now, just worship God in true worship, we get through it. No, in those hard times. Amen. Amen. And since so that is when the Holy Spirit takes over, we pray in our every language. Like we pray in our every language, the Holy Spirit takes over. No, the Holy Spirit is in control. Amen. And lastly, why we should not quit. No, number one, God loves us. John 3, like, and you can put that in practice, like John 3, 16. No, God loves us. We should not quit because God loves us. Number two, um, if um, go back to the what I opened with is Proverbs 29 11. God has a plan for our life. No, God has a plan. And number three, which is the last one, is, is taken from Mark chapter 16, verse 15. It says, The word needs you. No, the world needs you. So when Jesus sent them all into the world to like preach good, go into the world to preach good news. The world needs us. No, we're needed by the world. You know that's why as Christians we should never ever quit because you're needed. You know you're the hope. We're the hope for those that are lost. We're the hope. You know those that are struggling with alcohol addiction, drug addiction, sexual sin, whatever it is, depression, suicide. We are the hope to them. That's why we should not quit. No, because God is preparing us for something. When we're going through hard times, it's a preparation. No, God has something huge in store. He just wants us to mature first before he brings it so that we be able to handle it. You know, it's like a child. You won't put a child behind, behind a, a car when it's a child. You know, because the child is not ready to drive that car yet. No, they're not ready, but when they become an adult, no, you, that's when you put them behind the car, because now they're mature enough to handle it. No, and that's the same way with God. God wants to mature, mature as far as before he has, takes us to the next step. And sometimes that maturity brings pain. You know, sometimes it brings pain. You know, but we don't quit. You know, we never ever quit. Amen. Amen. You know, it's just uh, like, um, just pray that, you know, that God make a true heart like and the prayer I want to lift up is that true hard times that we stand. You know, like the whole that we call them, that God would give us the strength to stand, like true hard times that we don't quit, that we remain standing. Amen. Amen. So Father God, I come before you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for this wonderful Lord God opportunity, God, to share your word, Lord God. Father, I pray, my God, for each and every one of us, Lord God. I pray that you will give us that strength, Lord God, not to quit, Lord God. That we will stand, Lord God, through hard times, Lord God. When we've been stretched, Lord God, that we will stand, Lord God. We will not quit, Lord God. I pray for the young people, Lord God, the youth, Lord God, the children, Lord God, the young adults, Lord God. I pray, my God, you will give them the strength, Lord God, to stand, Lord God, to stand with you, Lord God, not to give up on you, Lord God, to not quit on you, Lord God. And I pray, my God, that we will not quit on ourselves, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, we were going, Lord God, up that hill, Lord God. We were struggling up that hill, Lord God. I pray, my God, that you will pick us up, Lord God, and carry us, Lord God, up that hill, Lord God. Comfort us, Lord God, through hard times, Lord God. Help us, Lord God. I pray, my God, for your Holy Spirit, Lord God. The Spirit of comfort, Lord God. To come and comfort us, oh, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, now to the God that we go through in life, Lord God. Comfort us, Lord God. I pray, my God, that each of us, Lord God, we stand, Lord God. Oh, Father God, we thank you, Lord God. We see, Lord God, how Peter, Lord God, oh, Lord God, when he messed up, Lord God, that he repented, Lord God, and he came back, Lord God, and you restored him, Lord God. And, Lord God, we're speaking about it today, Lord God. Oh, God, I pray, my God, do the same thing to us, Lord God. When we repent, Lord God, restore us, Lord God, and make us into that great woman, Lord God, that great man of God, Lord God. We know you have called, you have a call upon our lives, Lord. Oh, Lord God, I give you all the glory, Lord God. I give you all the honor, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 amen.